All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I do have some good news for you today. Uh, we are going to be looking at the colonies just a little bit closer, but this is going to be a much quicker uh, presentation today than you're used to. This one's only about eight or nine slides. So, yay. All right, so today we're looking at the life of the colonists in the 13 British colonies. So politics and the economics, the society, the basic breakdown. All right, so to begin, what is the economic situation in New England? Primarily, it's based off of these things. Shipbuilding, fishing, lumber, subsistence farming, meaning they farm enough for themselves and not really much else, and manufacturing. Now, the farming, that is primarily because there's not a super amount of good farmable land in New England, in places like Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Maine. Uh, it's very, there's a lot of rocks. It's a little more mountainous. There's not a lot of huge open flat land that's good to farm. All right. The middle colonies, that's like from New York down to Delaware. They have a lot in the way of shipbuilding. There's small farming, so there's more farm production. There's more farmable land. And it becomes really, really big in trade, especially because, you know, we've got cities like New York and Philadelphia. They become huge trading centers for the colonial world in North America. Like, you're not doing good business if you're not doing trade in New York. That still stands today. In the South, agriculture. That's the big moneymaker of the South. All the cash crops. The big ones being stuff like tobacco, indigo. You know, those are the really big ones. All right. Uh, there's a lot of hunting, farming, and trade going on in the mountainous areas, like the further out you're getting towards the Blue Ridge. And now, here we go. Rice, in the coastal areas, tobacco all over the place, and indigo, mostly on the eastern side as well. These are the three, the big three trading items of the southern colonies. All right, society in New England, primarily they're going off of religious practices, right? Intolerant of dissenters, people who went against their religious teachings of the Puritans up there. Anybody who disagreed with the role of the church in government, that's a dissenter. Uh, they would be severely punished, basically. Um, but there would be a big enough group of them who would break off, and they would actually found the colony of Rhode Island, also known as the tiniest state in the United States. All right, life in the middle colonies. Very, very diverse, very, very different religious groups. We have the Quakers of Pennsylvania, the Huguenots, the French uh, Protestants, and, the, and Jewish people settling in New York. Presbyterians were known for settling in New Jersey. All right, that's a pretty big thing right there. Um, as a side note, Catholics would be known for settling in Maryland. All right, and because of all these diversity, uh, social structures became very flexible. Uh, there would be a growing middle class here. Small farmers would be like, they would hold a decent amount of uh, regard. Artisans would flock to this area and they would, you know, do well for themselves with the trade business. Right, Southern society. Right, your family's status, how much land your family owns. It was very much a lot like how it was back in England. All right. Uh, the Great Awakening, though, would happen here. This is basically a revamping in religious beliefs. Uh, religion here was basically like the Baptists and Methodists. And that those really came about strongly during the Great Awakening. All right. Politics. New England, we have town meetings, direct democracy. Direct democracy, that is something you're definitely going to want to keep in mind. That means every person in the colony had a say in the government. Smaller colonies, 
they could practice this a lot more. So like no matter who you were, your voice mattered and everyone had to listen to you until you were done saying what you had to say. The middle colonies, um, they had democratic principles and they had more of the representative type of government, uh, similar to what you might recognize in our government now. Uh, people would speak on behalf of larger groups. In the South, it was basically based on social status. So if you were from a wealthy, well-to-do family, you were basically a part of running the colony, depending on how high up the chain you were. All right, so that'll do it for today. Uh, be sure that you study all of the exploration and colonial notes that we have been going over. Uh, because there is a quiz that will be coming up. All right. Have a good one.